So here's a failed attempt at me sticking this up my ass. Only joking, I'm sat on this for scale purposes, so you can see what sort of size it is. And this goes in the back of my car, if you didn't know. It's not made for my house. But I'm gonna put this into the living room because I love the sound it makes when I watch movies. That low frequency rumble, the ceiling shaking bass, the type of bass you don't hear, you only feel. Playing frequencies down to 10 hertz, that's what this does. So I'm gonna stick the sub in the box and then whack it in the living room, which is over there. Might just quickly put these on my feet because the floor is as cold as dog shit lying on a street in Siberia. Ascendant Audio SMD. Here we have a side view of it. 18 inch. Check out the spiders. These are the sort of spiders I don't mind. And these are the sort of spiders I do mind. Now, even though this sub is rated for 3,500 watts RMS, I give it about 5,500 to 6,000, maybe a little bit more. When it's in my car, the coil on a sub can get reasonably like blackened, charred, or whatever you call it, because of it being overpowered. And this seems to be like it was when I bought it, which is pretty awesome. My weights, I leave them neatly, neatly on the side. There we see the RCA cable coming from the back of the AV receiver. It's quite long, so I've just coiled it up and left it hanging on the side. And this is the Logitech speaker sub that I use normally. The bass doesn't get as low as I would like it and it's not as enjoyable because of that. These are the Sony speakers, which are probably, I have no idea how old, but they're pretty old. Pretty, probably I'm saying about 18 years old. I'm gonna, that's a rough guess, I have no idea. I'm 35, so I'll take 18 off that and that's whatever. Um, and I think I was about whatever when I saw these in the shop. This is the Donkyo, I mean the Onkyo receiver that everything is connected to. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is move this thing out of the way because it's uh, no longer needed. And um, I've got something better to replace it with, which is the thing that came out of my car. Just undoing everything from the back here. This is the long ass cable connected to the rear end of the AV receiver, to the sub output. And that is what is gonna to connect to the amplifier, which is gonna be powering the sub. So I've put the sub amp on its face so you can see what I'm gonna connect. There's my cat sniffing stuff. They like smelling things. He's sniffing away, smelling, and he's licking his mouth because he's just eating something. And he's like, what's going on? Why have you moved all this? What are you doing? What, what are all these new smells? What's that smell? What, what, that's the, oh, it's a wall. It's a wall, is it? Yeah, it's a wall. Meow, meow. Just feeding the wires through. So yeah, this box is in quite a state. It's six years old. It's had a bunch of shit done to it. I've extended it. I've shortened it and it's been scratched. It's been beaten. It's had Skittles melted on it. It's had Maltesers thrown at it. Luckily, even though the sub has a threaded rod coming out the back of it, it balances somewhat. And this is how some of the scratches have happened, which I'm completely fine with because it's just cosmetic stuff. Lift it up and let go. Now I've just got to make sure the holes have lined up. In go the wires for the sub. This sub does have two voice coils, so two pluses and two minuses get fed into the amp. So the box is stood up now and I've got it at a particular angle which will just about fit and I'm just going to push it in and that will be all. As you can see this is the side of the box and there's enough room, there's just enough room. Just move this speaker out a little more and I think that'll do nicely. Do the same to the other one. Now, if you've seen the other video in which I did this exact same thing, you'll know that this is a dip in the EQ curve that I made because the room was quite boomy at that frequency. So what I'm gonna do is place a plastic bag over the port of the speaker and then load up this tone generator. So I'm gonna type in 30 Hertz and this is what it looks like. Now, obviously I'm not gonna be playing this full blast because it's not in the back of my car. 
This is the volume it would be if a movie was playing. Now I'm gonna try 20 hertz. We're virtually at the shake stuff around you frequency. Now I'm gonna try 15 hertz. Anything under 20 hertz more or less is shaking things around you. You don't hear it. Um, and here is my cat as proof. He's wondering what the hell is going on. I thought I'd have a search on the internet to see if there are any subs that play down to 15 hertz and what sort of price they retail at. And I came across this Velodyne DD18. The price it was at when it was tested was around 3,300, but in the details here, it says that it plays down to 14 hertz, which is nice. I've tested mine down to about 10 hertz. I could feel it in the kitchen area. Basically, it sounded like one of those double rotor helicopters that the army uses. So yeah, that's uh, quite a nice little surprise. And uh, that's all for now.